Cari colleagues. So, dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank Alexandra for having invited me at this conference. This is a challenge for me to share with you our experience uh, at the Rijksmuseum. An experience which has uh, confirmed the success uh, of play as an educational method. The Rijksmuseum uses play as an instrument, as a tool, uh, stimulating creativity. The critical thought and the uh, curiosity, we are convinced that if uh, used in uh, the correct way, the uh, uh, playful methods uh, can create, can make new uh, experiences. So children can remember better what they live, what they see. Uh, now I will uh, shift to English. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Grazie Margherita per l'introduzione e grazie per avermi invitato qui. Sono uh, molto lieta di condividere con voi il modo in cui utilizziamo il gioco nel Rijks Museum. Margherita ha già in sottolineato che sono la direttrice eh, dell'educazione per il museo e negli ultimi anni ho lavorato eh, nel settore appunto per il, per il museo, ho lavorato nel settore dei eh, bambini, quindi museo per i bambini, ma eh, vorrei soprattutto voglio soffermarmi sugli aspetti principali della conferenza, quindi del museo dove lavoro. È una sfida, quindi, ma, uh, una grande sfida, ma cercherò di essere all'altezza. Il Reich Museum, come probabilmente sapete, si trova ad Amsterdam, um, una città con 800.000 persone e uh, 178 diverse nazionalità che vivono insieme. Il Reich Museum è il più grande dei Paesi Bassi. Come Margherita ha già sottolineato, è stato rinnovato um, tra il 2003 e il 2013 appunto nel 2013 ha riaperto i battenti al pubblico. Per mostrarvi da dove veniamo ho portato un'immagine, eh, questa immagine appunto che vedete nella slide. Can you please put up the sounds a little bit higher? So this was 2013, only two years ago. And for 10 years, we worked to reopen an international museum with an international impact. But until you open, you don't know whether you succeed. So I have again another video because I want to share with you the impact it had internationally. Yeah. 
moesten ze lang op wachten, maar het is open, het Rijksmuseum. Het Amsterdam Rijksmuseum bereidt het zich naar lange renovering op zijn wieder. Het Rijksmuseum wordt een nationale bron van pride. Het Rijksmuseum is eindelijk reopening. Het Rijksmuseum Hollandaise finalmente abrió sus puertas. Het Rijksmuseum in zijn nieuwe incarnatie heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Het grootste en belangrijkste museum van Nederland. Het museum van Nederland heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Het museum van Nederland heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Het museum van Nederland heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Het museum van Nederland heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Het museum van Nederland heeft een heel ambitieus doel. Chinese viewers will be interested to know and uh, to visit as well. I'm here because I think it's a very important uh, event for the whole world. Is that also big in England? I hope so. I've spent the last three years trying to make it as big as possible. Viele wollten immer Rembrandt sehen, die Nachtwache, und sie haben lange, lange darauf gewartet, um es wieder hier sehen zu können. It's hoped that every Dutch child will make at least one visit here by the time he or she reaches their 12th birthday. Will Gompertz. BBC News, Amsterdam. Simon McGregor Wood, Al Jazeera, Amsterdam. This would not happen anywhere else. I think it's like fantastic. So also we were overwhelmed with 600 people of press from all over the world. And so it started um, in 2013 uh, with the public where we did a renovation for, because of course a museum is there for the public. And they came. So since the opening, many, many people have been visiting the Rijksmuseum. To give you a little bit more background, what is the Rijksmuseum, what can you expect there? It's the National Museum of the Dutch Art and History, where you can actually walk through the ages, from the Middle Ages till now, till the 20th century. And you actually pass the, um, the different uh, ages, where you find a, a mix of pictures and objects. So actually, it's a history lesson, you could say. Very important is that a museum is a public institution. A lot of our collection is given by citizens, so we thought it was very important to give, to give back the museum to everyone, which is a challenge. We say, the Rijksmuseum, with the Rijksmuseum, we want to connect people, art, and history. And to do that in a concisive way, we formulated a, a number, a set of values that are incorporated in all our activities, and not only our educational activities. And they are authenticity. We work always from the uh, authentic objects. We strive for the highest quality. We want to give people a personal experience. We try to be innovative in the ways, in the means of education. And we strive for simplicity in a way it should be clear to the public. And altogether, we try to make the Rijksmuseum into a love brand. We want the people to say, this is my museum, and I feel acquainted in this museum. But to be open for everyone, uh, and to be appealing for everyone, it's very difficult, because how do you do that? Um, so we try to investigate the kind of public where we were addressing to. So we made six groups that we identified and we put a lot of effort in trying to find out the needs of each of these groups because we are convinced that if you are very much aware of the needs of your public, you can make the translation uh, from the collection to this public. So you see, we were aiming at 2 million visitors, which has become the last year already 2.5 million, so we get much more visitors than we expect. But we discern them in cultural tourists that are the people both from the Netherlands and abroad that want to have a good time and to really, uh, without any knowledge, or, or sometimes they can have knowledge, but want to have a good time and have limited time to visit the collections. We have the art lovers that expect more in-depth um, knowledge of the collection and more in-depth experience. Very important for us are the schools, but also the teachers of the schools. Families and children, very large group, but also the professionals, and not only the curators, but also, for example, educators or people from facility management, all the, the professionals in our museum. And a new group is the potentials, and we think that is a very important group, uh, because the potentials are the people in our country that go to a museum when they are on holiday abroad, but never visit a museum in the Netherlands. So actually, the Potentials is a group that you reach by marketing, but once they come, you have to, to give them a good experience. Our directors say that education is an essential task of the museum, because why do you have a museum? 
uh, all the other activities you can also do in an industrial area because you, but you have a museum to make the connection with the people. So we say the need of the public is starting point and our goal is to inform, enrich and entice. And for this, we have of course our main building, but also we have a separate building in our gardens called the Tekenschool, which is a drawing school that uh, the architect of our museum originally created as a drawing school where drawing lessons were given. And when in the 60s the art academy uh, was erected, all the activities went into this art academy, but with the... that we bring the most beautiful treasures and exciting stories to the children and we really believe in guided programs because by guided programs you have the optimal opportunity to make the right match between the public and the collection. We use every transfer method all the programs are developed with the schools based on the curriculum and we have a large capacity because we have a capacity to receive 28 classes a day. In the drawing school, this separate building, we is based on this important line of Confucius, which says, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, and I do and I understand. Learning by doing is our motto in the Taken School. Um, the collection is always starting point, so you, should, you cannot do this program in any other place because it's connected to the collection. <laughs> We try to enhance the visual literacy and historical knowledge by giving children, and not only children, but also adults, an unforgettable experience. All the programs last at least two hours, and always part of the uh, program uh, is in the main building to connect to the collection. So in this Taker School, we have three ateliers where we have workshops for children in our art studio and for schools. And for adults, every evening we have classes for adults. We have a media lab where we have programs for families and separate pro programs for, for children and also for schools and also for adults. And now I come to the main topic where you ask me for, learning by play. In contrary to the words of Roberta Farnay, I think it's very important already from an early age on to get children to a museum. Because a museum, I'm convinced that the museum has added value to the education that you get in your family and at school. Because in a museum, there is the opportunity to stimulate creativity and curiosity and a place to explore. explore. Not that you cannot do that at home, but it is a rich environment where it's stimulated in another way. We, I want to uh, to acquaint you with four of our programs because we think that play not only toys because I will give you um, a small example of toys. I saw in a magazine that one of the toys we developed from the Rights Museum is uh, presented in the, in the magazine and I, will, I brought it with me too so you can see it live. But what I share, would like to share with you are four programs to show you how play can be a very important educational tool in a museum. And I selected two unguided programs and two guided programs uh, to show you what impact it can have. The first uh, program is an unguided program for school children. As I said before, we really encourage uh, schools to use a guided program because we educate our staff ourselves and they uh, are educated to, for the right public, bring it in the right way in touch with our uh, collection. But we also have for the schools that, because our, the children have free access until they are 18 and some schools do not have money to buy the, the guided programs, we have this unguided program called, uh, it's, a, it's a play, it's called Quizje uh, Rijks. Uh, um, and the main focus of this unguided program is to look uh, better and to see more by details, to cooperate within the group and within the class, and to discover the museum. The whole program is based on the multiple intelligence of Howard Gardner. 
um, for whom it is made. It is made for 10 to 12 year old children uh, in primary school. The children are divided in five groups and they all follow their own route with a specific theme. And we have five themes. There are five itineraries they take. And they have to do commissions. They have to discuss and think. They have to really look close to the objects and they have to discover facts in the collection. And by, um, by this game where they have to unravel uh, the mysteries of the Rijksmuseum, they have to find right words, and together they create a poem. And in the end, when they have the good solution, they get a small mini-museum back to the class with a few objects that, ha that they have seen, and they are encouraged to create more objects in the class. So that is one of the, that is the rewards. And you see there's a lively discussion in the galleries based on this unguided program and based by the teacher. So although we do not encourage you to take these programs, I think still it works well for a school that uses an unguided program and the, the whole game that's included in the program also works very well. A second program I, I would like to share with you is for the very small school children. There's a big demand uh, from the schools to already offer programs for uh, children that are four and five years old. And the goal for this target group is that they at least enter the museum first because um, that's why we think schools are so important because through the schools you reach all public, you reach also the children that have backgrounds or families that never visit the museum. We want them to explore the museum, to look at objects, to look at different objects and to discover there are not only paintings in the museum uh, but also objects like ships and uh, weapons to learn and also they have to, uh, to discover that um, going to a museum is fun, which is very important because then they would like to go again. I want to uh, share with you this program that is called Help the Music is Missing. It's a game for the children, but it's um, in the museum uh, guided by actors, but it's a whole program that starts already in the schools. And the small children at school watch a stop motion movie. It's in Dutch, but I would like to show a small part of it so that you have an idea of this program. So I need my technician again to, to start the film. <laughs> Could you please start the film as well? Yeah. Or maybe I can do it myself. I see something appear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have many videos actually. Yes, it works. <laughs> hey, jullie komen straks naar het Rijksmuseum, hè? Wat leuk. Kijk, daar is hij. Groot, hè? Het lijkt wel een kasteel, vind je niet? Een museum is een plek waar allemaal belangrijke dingen bewaard worden. Klokken, schilderijen, so it wapens, the museum. beelden, What is a museum? veel meer. What can you expect er komen in miljoenen museum? mensen van over de hele wereld om deze mooie spullen te bekijken. In het museum werken veel mensen die op alle spullen letten en voor ze zorgen. Betty van de Beveiliging bijvoorbeeld. Betty let heel goed op museum. dat niemand iets aanraakt. De enige Security die dat wel mag, is Ali Dingendoek, de schoonmaakster. It's Kijk, Ali, it's the cleaning hebben. lady. Zij weet precies hoe ze al die mooie oude spullen uit de pruikentijd schoon moet maken. En dat is helemaal niet zo makkelijk hoor. Je kan niet zomaar overal een doekje overheen halen. Nee, ieder voorwerp heeft zijn eigen speciale manier. De pruik van deze man bijvoorbeeld moet met een hele speciale haarspray schoongemaakt worden. En oh oh, dat was de verkeerde spuitbus. Nou ja, de koningin van Engeland mag niet aangeraakt worden. Dan maar zo, vindt Ali. Ha tjoe. En schoon is de koningin. Er werken ook mensen in het museum die je niet ziet als je rondloopt, maar die er wel zijn. Een geheime club. Het genootschap voor rijksgeheimen. Dit is nou Wil Wijzer. Hij is de klokkenmaker van het museum, maar hij hoort ook bij die geheime club. 
Hij doet onderzoek naar de tijd in de pruikentijd. Hoe klonk die tijd? Hoeveel tijd was er? Wat kostte nou veel en wat kostte nou weinig tijd? En waar is die tijd gebleven? Ali Dingendoek. Yes, I just wanted to show you a small part. So I was figuring out how I could stop the movie. Um, so you saw that uh, the cleaning lady is introduced. Uh, Will is the restorer. Uh, he has been introduced. And he has invented a machine to help the cleaning lady to facilitate her work. But by a mistake in a very important clock in our 18th century department, all the clock bells are di has disappeared in this machine. And that's what they will see in this movie. Um, so all the children, when they go to the museum, they have to help Will and the cleaning lady to find back the clocks. And by this search, uh, and you see in the movie that all the clocks disappear in different uh, artworks, so they will look at all the artworks that appear in the video. And then they try to bring back all the clocks. They practice by um, making the sound uh, again, because they, they have little bells in the museum that they play. And the magic moment is that the clock plays. So when they are, what you see here is when they come in the museum, they are welcomed by Ali Dingendoek and Will Weizer that are already introduced in the stop motion video. And to discern the groups, they have made their own 18th century perukes in order to, uh, to divide the groups in the right colors that connect to the color of the bells they will use later. And you see here is the, they have gone through the galleries and uh, the actors, they really bring them into connection with the, uh, the collection. So they are um, encouraged to look at the collections. They get a little information on the on the uh, collection that connects to their age. And finally, they have the bells and they make their own musical composition in this quest to bring back this music to the clock. And this is the magical moment because this, clock's, this clock um, plays every half an hour. So it has to be very well planned because the children have to be in front of the clock when it starts playing. And it's really a magical moment because all the children, they always are so happy when the clock when they notice that they are able to make the clock work. So you see, this is a way of play by means of information, by a search, by interaction between the actors and the children to solve the mystery and let the clock play again, which works very well for this age group. So this is the second program, a guided program. Then a third program that we have developed for the uh, nine to 12 year old children of the primary schools. And this project is a challenge because it uses many sorts of play in a complete program that replaces uh, a part of the school lessons at primary school uh, connected to the, uh, the period, the most important period of our Dutch history, which is also very well represented in our museum, which is the golden age. And you see here the topics that are really the obliged topics for the children in school on Rembrandt, the canals of Amsterdam, Republic, Hugo Grotius. So you see that's the company that did the trade in the 17th century with the East, Michiel de Ruiter. And we developed the program, You and the Golden Age. Um, I can say a lot about this program, but we made a small video in order to share with you um, what are the elements from this program. And also, as you see, we are proud that we won already two prizes with this program. We won the ICAN SECA Best Practice Award last year. And for us, very important, this January, we won the uh, NRT Innovation Award, which is a, an award given by teachers to the best school program for learning. So for us, it was a proof that museums have really added value for learning and added value to the situation in the class. So now I'm going to try to activate the video again. Het Rijksmuseum heeft een uniek lesstofvervangend programma ontwikkeld. Al heel lang huist er in het Rijksmuseum een geheim genootschap. Het zit hier in het Rijksmuseum en het heet het Genootschap voor Rijksgeheimen. En dit jaar opent het zijn deuren. Via spannende filmpjes worden de leerlingen door Nienke meegenomen het project in. Kan 
balskogels versplinteren het hout. En uitgenodigd om mee te doen. Jullie gaan doen wat het genootschap al jaren doet. Oude verhalen tot leven wekken. Wie weet nog iets van de Gouden Eeuw? Door een klassikaal rankingspel word je iemand uit die periode. Als jij wil zou zijn, zie je bijna iedereen. Maar jij bent gewoon een beetje een afstand. Onze kunstenaar Rembrandt. Ja, die ja. Oh yes! Nog een vraag. Zou jij je leven wagen voor een nieuwe ontdekking? Ik ben tegen. Ik ben tegen. Ik ben tegen. In het Rijksmuseum zijn ze te gast bij de leden van het Genootschap van Rijksgeheimen. En krijgen ze een rondleiding door de echte collectie van het Rijks. Het Bouwhuis was ook heel cool. Er waren ook allemaal enge geluiden en zo. En het was vrieskoud. Het speelt eigenlijk de geschiedenis en dat is heel erg leuk. Ze worden tenslotte onderdeel van het theaterstuk. De Gouden Eeuw wordt tastbaar. Hierbij verklaar ik het project. Jij en de Gouden Eeuw voor Hoven. So you see, this is a completely other way to include play in learning. Um, and maybe it's when seen, it starts with a computer play. It's actually, uh, it are six lessons for the schools. And it starts with a computer play where you really become an existing uh, a person that, well, once existed in the 17th century. And actually, by this play, you discover a lot and you get a lot of knowledge without actually having the feeling that you learn. And we tested this program because by really being encouraged to do research in your class from an existing person, you really uh, have already a perspective. And if you have to share it in a class, you get multiple perspectives in uh, working on a theme. Uh, a very important aspect is also that you have to present it to the other pupils. So you go in depth as a pupil in one story, but you have to share it all the time with your other pupils. Uh, after three lessons, you go to the museum, you see that the actors bring you to the collection. So from the content, you, are, you make the connection with the objects. And we know that children never forget this connection. And also in the school, they have um, learned some uh, theater texts, some small theater texts. We only work with pro professional actors, so what they are going to do, they are going to finish the story, they get a, the, the children get a challenge at school when they come to the museum, and they work in three groups with the actors in order uh, to finish the story and in the end present it to each other uh, in the theater. And we know that it's really, this information really gets in depth uh, to the children. What we hope is to do some research to make focus groups and to follow the children in school and children who have done that program to, to prove that it's really a good method in, in, in a way of learning and uh, that it really adds to the way uh, children learn in schools. So this was my third example. The fourth example, you can actually test yourself if you have a smartphone, because we uh, developed uh, multimedia tours, which are free of charge, that can everybody can uh, download it free. But the challenge for the families was to make a quest, um, because we noticed that you have many children tours in museums, uh, but then as a parent, you always want to know what the children experience, which is not so interesting very often for you. And then you do, you do adult tours, so it's always a struggle, you know, to, to really follow what the children do and also have a good time yourself. So we tried to combine it. We made a family quest. So we uh, um, developed eight mysteries connected to collection that you have to discover as a family yourself. And you have to play it with a minimum of two and a maximum of four players. And you have to solve and to unravel all these um, uh, challenges yourself. So we try to make it challenging for both the parent and the child to discover together, to learn together, to cooperate and also to have fun.
download it on your smartphone, you find a teaser that sort of uh, tries to bring you to the museum, but while you are in the museum, it, this video only activates but when you start playing the game in the museum, uh, then you will meet one of our actors that gives hey, you the Hey, super! Ihr habt mich gefunden. Gut gemacht. Oh. Ihr seid heute hier um Geheimnis. Oh, I'm sorry, because the, the video did not work. They used the, the, the version on my stick, and it's in German. So, I don't know, do you understand German? Okay, shall I play it anyway? Okay. No. Oh. Uh, sorry. Hey, great! Oh. You found me! <laughs> well I did done. something magical. You are here to discover secrets. The Rijksmuseum holds thousands of secrets. Mischievous and mysterious secrets. Secrets that tell us about the past, about who we are. My name is Bob Morelius and I work in the Rijksmuseum. I do investigative research here. It's very important. The better we investigate, the more secrets we discover, the more we know. About ourselves. Today you are going to investigate. Ah, don't worry, I'll help you. Just look at the enormous collection here at the Rijksmuseum. This tells us so much about the past. And sometimes it's not what you expect. Because the closer you look, the more you see. <laughs> I'll be your navigator for today. I'll bring you to paintings, ships and artworks where I'll challenge you to look carefully, to investigate, to think hard and to discover secrets. Oh, sorry. It's Wim, the director. Hello, Mr. Morelia speaking. Well, they're right here in front of me. And they seem quite clever, actually. Well, I'm not so sure about the adults, to be honest. Uh, you think the children can't do it? <laughs> Wanna bet? But one cake? No, make it ten cakes! Okay, well then, I get ten cakes if the children do discover the secrets. Goodbye, Vim. Hour, you're going to try and solve eight puzzles. Each puzzle leads to a secret. If you manage to discover the secret, you'll find a letter. And the first letter is the last letter of my first name. My name's Bob, with a B at the end. <laughs> well then, you have the first letter already. Let's get started. First, we're going to take a photo. Follow me. So you're guided, you have to discover eight of the objects in the museum, and each object you, are, you get a challenge, and it if it appears, the question is, it appears always on one player, and one question you have to solve together. So it's really um, a, a way of playing uh, the game together. So I gave you some examples. This is one of our uh, paintings of the Gallery of Honor of Jan Steen. Um, where you get questions uh, which you have to solve yourself on your device. If you have the good answer, you get a reward by means of a message, and it always says, wait for the others. If the others cannot solve the problem, you are encouraged to help them. And then, uh, after uh, a series of, of discoveries of this painting, you always have to solve one uh, question together as a group. <coughs> And then you get a secret presented and it gives you a letter, what was said in the beginning, and at the end you have a word uh, that gives you a present when you go to deliver your, um, your multimedia tour. This is another example of our uh, porcelain collection and it uh, asks questions, what, what the objects uh, are, and it gives you a right answer, but this object it gives three answers that does not have give the correct answer because it's a very curious object and children like it, people like it very much because it looks like a gravy boat, but it's not because you have to discover what it is. 
And it's the school called Bourdalou, which is a potty. And the uh, image, if you look very closely to the object, the image of the object shows you what the object is. Yes. Um, I don't know how much time I have because, yes, because when you have the reward, then uh, uh, your navigator is coming back to you, and then you will see this. Well done! Mm, I knew you could do it! And you even managed to discover the secrets of the chamber pot. Great! And I won my bet with Vim! Remember, keep on investigating. At home, at school, in the playground, at work. Investigation teaches you to look more carefully. And then you might see something very special. And oh, you'd like some cake too? They serve cake at the restaurant. It's tasty. Too much cake isn't good for you, so maybe you're better off with a sandwich or an apple. And if you go to the shop downstairs, remember to say the secret code to the nice people behind the cash register. The word with nine letters. Maybe you'll get a fun surprise. But don't tell anyone, or everybody will want one. Make sure they don't hear you. Shh. So that's the family game. So try it yourself. Although you actually have to come to the Rijks Museum because it's really made to discover the object. Now I've given you four examples of how we play, how we use play in programs in the museum. But also uh, our collection was was already said uh, is inspiration for making uh, play materials. And I show you now two of our uh, uh, two of the images that have been developed in Playmobil, and I must say it's the most successful product of our shop in the Rijks Museum. It's incredible how many people want to buy it. I brought them with me so you can see them live later on if you like. But that is something you do. You take home and you can play with uh, at home. Um, very short, uh, we, I already mentioned that we think that it's very important to reach all school children in the Netherlands. And what we do is to try to break away uh, the barriers. So we really have been successful in finding funds to offer free uh, bus rides to the Netherlands. So now we receive more than 100,000 school children a year from over the whole of Netherlands. And the children uh, uh, outside the 60 uh, kilometer area um, of Amsterdam can use the Rijksmuseum bus. We are an inspiration for Dutch people, but also for our sponsors. And I don't know, it's just fun. Can I uh, show it or is it too long? Okay. ING is, is the main sponsor, sponsor of the Dutch Rijks Museum. To use now the, the museum is reopening after a decade of renovation, ING wants to claim their sponsorship. After 10 years, the wondrous works of the Rijksmuseum are back. So ING took the most famous painting of all and let it return. thousand people commented or tweeted about it so I finish here because I mean you might have seen it because it was a big hub around the reopening but it's it shows that um, uh, that it's nice that so many people get inspiration from our collection in many different ways and even the people who make it possible that we operate because we are depend on their funds to operate so it's nice to share with you
Then I am almost to the end of my presentation and I would like to ask your attention also for the hands-on uh, organization, the International Association of Children in Museums, you might have heard of it. Um, it's an organization that tries to professionalize uh, educational offer to children worldwide by means of children's museums, museums and science centers. Uh, I'm part of the board already for 10 years and act now as a president for the last four years. One of the, my Italian colleagues is Mariana Carli from Explora in Rome. Uh, and this year, in, from 13 till 16 October, we will organize an international conference in Amsterdam. And I would like to put this under your attention and hope that many of you will come. I brought also some leaflets, but of course you can find it also on the website. Um, Four years ago, we made the initiative to create an award, uh, the Children in Museums Award for the best example of a permanent children's program or exhibition that has now been awarded for three times and it will be awarded part of the conference in October. You cannot, the, the closing date has been passed for this year award, but I encourage you all, if you have very good programs for children, to look at the website and maybe apply for the next year award. So now I have come to the end of my presentation and again I would like to uh, finish with a film because what we think in the Rijksmuseum is the most important thing that everyone is welcome and that's the way how we have presented this in the media and on television. Thank you very much for your attention.